Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host between Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'll talk about this week here. Obviously, we're gonna we're in the we're starting up the boys basketball districts coming up. Um, obviously, I have a column on that. It's uh, gonna be forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um, it has all the matchups. Um, doesn't have projections and all that. I mean, like I really don't, you know, like to do projections. I know um, MI Prep Zone just released their projections for boys basketball. Some I agree with. Some I really don't agree with. Um. And there's a couple of reasons why. I mean, like, it's on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, people are going to obviously look at, of course, the girls' basketball districts have been released. Um, we're going to break those down, obviously, on this episode here. Um, obviously, of course, um, we're going to look at all the matchups here in the district and maybe give an indicator to see where um, everybody really stands when it comes to the district. So, let's without further ado, let's begin here. Obviously, um, a lot to talk about. Um, let's look at our first district here. This is going to be at district number 60. We're going to go to Division 2 to Division 1. Uh, we're going to start at Harper. Uh, district 60 is going to be at Harper Woods High School. Um, you got East Point taking on the top seed, Harper Woods, and then Detroit East English Village Prep. Taking on the two seed Harper Woods Chandler Park. Um, when I look at this district, and I think this is going to be very interesting. You know who's got the most wins out of this whole district? I'm going to give you a good question. I wonder if you answer at East Point, you're correct. <laughs> because here's why. I mean, East Point right now has got, you know, they got they got 11 wins right now. That's the most out of everybody in this district. But Harper Woods has a lot more points based on the who they played, along with Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. So when I look at this district, and, and it's a dangerous matchup for East Point. I mean, like, I mean, like for Harper Woods. I mean, yes, East Point's got a lot of wins, but they haven't played the strength of schedule as I would say a Harper Woods has or a Chandler Park has. Um, or an East English Village Prep has. Now, Detroit East English Village Prep, you know, they they have been just really have underperformed this year. They really, with five wins this year, I'm looking at it according to the MSU website, they really have underperformed. And I've, I've been really disappointed with the play of Detroit East English Village Prep. I mean, they've been, they haven't been, Really good. I mean, like, you know, they haven't been really good this season. They really haven't been. So, when I figure them out, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Because I thought, honestly, heading in back in June, I thought East English Village Prep would be a dark horse contender in this district. I thought they would be. But, they have not. I mean, when you look at East Point, you know, you look at the Mac, I think they're in the Mac bronze. Um, and you think to yourself with East Point is, yeah, you got 11 wins, but you haven't really been impressive. You know, it was against teams that haven't been really impressive. <laughs> so when I look at East, when I look at then Harper Woods, Chandler Park, I mean, they haven't been really good this season, but they've been all right. Um. I mean, but they could make amends in this district. Harper Woods, to me, has, I think, the most pressure in this district for several reasons. Latoya Tate is their first-year coach in the Pioneers. Um, they really have not lived up to expectations this year. I mean, like they've had some really rough losses. I mean, but Harper Woods, they can make amends for it. I mean, they got a veteran team, you know, that they can make some noise. Um, you know, but I, I really feel like they haven't been, you know, they, they haven't been able to make the next step and, you know, 
being in the being, playing those schedule in the white that they have, it helps them, and that's why they got the number one seed. But I just don't know if I can trust them, you know, to make that next step. Um, so when I look at this district, um, the matchups here, I think Harper Woods has to be weir really wary of East Point. I really do because, as I mentioned earlier, East Point is an eleven win team. Um, I mean, like, and then of course, um. You know, and then Harper Woods, you know, they really, yeah, they played the gauntlet of the white. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Harper Woods responds. Um, being the host school, being the top seed. Um, we'll see what they're made of. I mean, we'll really see what they are, um, what they're made of in this district. Um, then the other side, East English versus um, Harper Woods, Chandler Park. Um, like I said, these are two teams that are really, I mean, like going to try to make amends for, for struggling this season. I mean, like obviously Harperwood Chandler Park Academy has the number two seed in the district. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens here. Um, I would have to go Harper Woods right now as an indicator, but they look really prone to getting upset. And I think that's a dangerous, dangerous sign. When you're a host school, um, top seed, you're going to have the pressure on it. East Point, despite the double-digit win total that they have this year, um, they don't really have any pressure on them. And I think the Shamrocks have a chance here to pull off an unthinkable upset um, of Harper Woods. Um, which would be really interesting to see. Um, Chandler Park Academy, we know the history they have. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that district, you know, it's only a 14 district. The other 14 districts over Adam Waterford Mott, we're going to talk that in a little bit. Um, but when I look at this district here, it's not a strong district. Um, I mean, like it, I mean, the Harper Woods is NPR. I think was under was under 500, which is, you know, a little bit off. Um, so this district here, not a strong district, but it looks winnable for Harper Woods. Um, but they better be careful of East Point um, in the district semifinal. So really, that's where I have with them is they got to be very, very careful. Um, district 58, this will be a Birmingham, Detroit Country Day. Um, a lot of changes here in this one. Um, it's a 16 district here. Um, we got Ferndale University taking on Detroit Lincoln King. Um, that winner's taking on the top seed Birmingham Detroit Country Day in the district semifinals. And then you have Detroit University Prep versus Detroit Henry Ford. That winner's taking on Ferndale in the district semifinals. Um, when I look at this district here and I study this one, um, you kind of got to look at the success of Ferndale this season. The Eagles have done really, really well. I mean, they have performed to the expectations of, you know, of a lot of expectations. I mean, like, I'll be honest with you. I didn't expect Ferndale to do much this year, but they really have performed really well. I mean, there's a reason why I have Ferndale right now ranked number two in the top 23. Um, they won the gold this year. Um, which wasn't surprising. Um, but just surprising to me that a couple of teams forfeited against them. Um, they got a young nucleus on that team. They got three very talented players. Um, they played a tough non-conference, um, which includes a win against Detroit Cast Tech, which is huge. I mean, anytime you knock off a team that's well coached under Coach Antoine Simpkins, that says something about your program. Um, the only weakness I have with Ferndale is they've got to get more players into the program. They got to build their sub varsity programs. If they can build their sub varsity programs, then I think the Eagles can do something. They can be a team that that scares. They can be a very scary team. Not only, you know, next season, but also in the years after that. I mean, so, but when I look at Ferndale, 
their accomplishments was huge this year for them. Really, really huge for them. So now they have a favorable matchup against the winner of Detroit University Prep and Detroit Henry Ford. I thought about this earlier in the week when I said about Detroit Henry Ford was you look at what they bring. I mean, obviously Henry Ford's played a tough schedule. But, you know, when you look at the NPR, everything set up, it didn't really set up really well for them. And now they got to play a first-round matchup against Detroit University Prep, um, Science and Math Academy, which they should win that. They should win that game. But Henry, but imagine having to play Ferndale in the district semifinals. Um, that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. It'll be really interesting to see. Um, now for Ferndale University. I just feel absolutely bad for Coach Brianna Rowe and her team this year. They have really struggled. They have, there's been games where they haven't been able to get to double digits. They haven't been able, you know, defensively, they don't look good. I mean, they don't look, you know, they're trying. They're a young group. <laughs> they're a very, very young group. And... It's going to take them a while. I'm, I know they're going by trial by fire right now over there. <laughs> um, and now they get to see Detroit Lake and King Academy, um, which they were battling with Ferndale um, for the number two seed. I mean, them, Lincoln King Academy, and Detroit Henry Ford were battling for that number two seed. The reason why it's, it was important for them to have the number two seed was because you avoid having to play Detroit Country Day in the semifinals. We know how good Birmingham Detroit Country Day is. They're well coached. They're a well-oiled machine over there. Um, so when I look at Detroit Country Day, um, they're a scary group. A really scary group. Um, now, Ferndale obviously has played teams that are scary. I mean, they played Celine um, earlier in the year. They played a couple other teams that have been really good. I mean, Ever Pioneer, Ever Skyline's a team that, you know, they ended up getting a win against them. Um, but when I look at, <coughs> uh, when I look at the Eagles' chances in this district, Fernet University, though, I don't think it's got a chance in this district. I, I just don't think they do. They don't match up well with Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Um, I, I just think that they're going to have some issues. They're going to they're gonna struggle. Um, we'll see. But if they somehow upset Detroit Lincoln King, which would be a big upset, by the way, and they would have to play Detroit Country Day, I, I just don't think they're going to get by them. I just don't. And obviously the talent level there at Detroit Country Day, you know they're loaded. Um, and then on the other side, you know, you have Ferndale, who I think has got the best part of the draw. Um, this is setting up to be a Birmingham Detroit Country Day versus Ferndale District Final. It's setting up to be that way. Um, if they can get, I mean, if that matchup set up perfectly, um, then it's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes. I think Ferndale will hold their own against them. I, I just do. But overall, I just don't see anybody touching Detroit Country Day in this district. I mean, I just really don't know if I really see it um, just with the way that that team is. I mean, like, that team is just absolutely scary. Um, you know, and they played some good Division One teams um, earlier in the year. Um, and... They're one of the highest teams NPR wise in Division Two, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. But you got to give an edge to Birmingham Detroit Country Day in that district. You you got to give an edge to them in there. <laughs> um, let's go to Division One. Um, here we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go from twenty one to thirty two. Um, we're gonna start over at Berkeley. Um, district twenty one. This is a six team district here. Um, you got Safi Darson Tech taking on Oak Park. 
That winner's taking on top seed Detroit Renaissance in the um, district semifinals. And then on the other side, you have Berkeley versus Redford Thurston. And that winner's taking on Detroit Mufford in the district semifinals. Um, a lot of subplots into this district. I mean, there's really a lot of subplots. Um, obviously, when you look at Berkeley, I think Berkeley got a really nice draw here. Despite, you know, not getting seeded, despite not getting, um, you know, I mean, like, Coach Clay Shaver's done a really nice job with this team. I mean, he's done a really nice job. The kids are happy. They're getting recognized. You look at, of course, very proven players in Mave Nolan. You look at Maddie Boswell, who I really think's really stepped her game up this year. Um... If I had to say a most improved player on Berkeley um, would be, from a name recognition standpoint, Maddie Boswell really is the one that I, I would have to give that, that award to Maddie Boswell because of what she's done. You know, nobody expected her to come into the season and do what she's been doing. And she's been playing really good basketball. Another one that I've really been impressed with is Caitlin Stills. I mean, you look at the performance that she's been doing for them. And, you know, I didn't expect her to have a breakout year like what she's been doing over there at Berkeley on the um, streets of Catalpa. Um, obviously, we know about Mavi Nolan. We know about her, Haley Kirkwood. We know about Nadia Watt. Um, we know about Avery Wintergarten. Um, I mean, we know that we know, that we know what they're more than capable of doing. We, all of them very capable, very capable players, but they've been doing, has been playing really good basketball and they control their destiny in the blue. Um, they control their destiny in the blue. Um, I think they're a game behind Troy right now. I got to look at the standings again. Um, but when you look at their district and having to play Redford Thurston in the first round, that's going to be a really interesting matchup because Berkeley's won 15 games. Redford Thurston's won 12. And the Panthers are not a bad team. I mean, Redford Thurston's not a bad team. Um, it's a very interesting matchup because both these teams had double-digit wins. Both these teams play in some in in some tough conferences. I mean, Berkeley obviously the blue. Redford Thurston, I think they're I think they're in the Michigan Metro Conference or in the KLA. I'm not really sure. Um, but it's an interesting matchup. And then whoever wins that one has to take on Detroit Mumford. Detroit Mumford really has really struggled this year. But their NPR points were, were high enough that it allowed them to get the number two seed. I mean, considering who Detroit Mumford's played, they played a very tough schedule. Got a very good point guard on that team, by the way. They also do as well. So it's interesting to see how, um, how that matchup will go. I mean, you look at that matchup between um, Berkeley and Redford Thurston, um, and then you could just you just go and imagine yourself being in that, um, imagine yourself in that district. Um, you look at, of course, um, I mean, I mean, Detroit Mumford's well coached. I mean, like, they got Cherish Jefferson, they got Sanaya Williams, they got Elijah Thomas, and Kana and Kamara Bragg. That's not a bad lineup to have if you coach Kareem Hogan. That's not a bad lineup. So it'll be interesting, you know, if, let's say, if Berkeley were to knock off. Redford Thurston and have to play Detroit Mumford. I think that's a great matchup for Berkeley. I just think that is a really great matchup for them. If it's Redford Thurston, I don't know. But if it's Berkeley being at home, home court, um, it matters. It really matters. Um, and then on the other side of the draw, you got Southie Darson Tech taking on Oak Park. Um, that winner's taking on Detroit Renaissance. Um, when I look at this matchup here between A&T and Oak Park, um, 
it's a complete mismatch on paper because Oak Park's a young team. Um, they have a hard time scoring at times. Um, they don't, you know, they don't really, you know what I mean? I mean, defensively, they're okay. Um, it's just rebuilding that program over there at Oak Park. It's just rebuilding that program. Now you're taking on an A&T team who's got some proven experience back. Kamara Page. Um, you know, you look at, um, and then they got others on that team for Coach Akita Coltrane. But a and I've it's been really hard for me to trust this team all year long. Because when I look at a and um, you look at, they're going to put points up. They're going to score a bunch of points. They score, I mean, they score a ton of points. The problem with a and is they don't defend really well. Now, people are going to say, well, they only allowed 39 points against Troy Athens. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm looking at some of the games that gave up a ton of points. You look at the course, the, as I mentioned earlier. I mean, West Bloomfield, for example, they gave up 97. Um, now, albeit, you know, we know what West Bloomfield is. But I don't trust a and especially... Let's share it by Oak Park, but then they're going to have to play Detroit Renaissance in the next round. So when I look at this matchup, and, you know, A&T likely taking on Detroit Renaissance in the, in the um, district semifinal. This is going to be, Detroit Renaissance has played a really brutal schedule. They were a Final Four team last year. They... You know, they got experience. They're well coached under Coach Deshaun Wood. I mean, they got proven talent everywhere. I don't think A&T matches up really well in this matchup. But it also wouldn't surprise me if this game, if that game were to be like a 97 to 62 game. It really wouldn't surprise me. Now, I know Detroit Renaissance is a solid group defensively. They didn't look great in the Operation Friendship game against Ann Arbor Father Gabriel Richard. Um, now, obviously, we know how good the, the Fighting Irish are. I mean, they're, the, I think, the best team in the Catholic League with, by far. But, you know, they didn't look great against them in that Operation Friendship game. They really didn't. So there is a way to beat them. I mean, there is a way. But do I see A&T doing it to Detroit Renaissance? Probably not. Do I see Berkeley if they get to the district final? It's possible. I mean, is it likely? Probably not. But then again, let's not re- let's not forget this team a couple years ago under when they had Ashley Loon took on a young, very hungry and talented Detroit Renaissance team in Detroit. And they went and beat him. They went and beat him. And I know Coach Shaney Lawal very well. And I know that was his last game he coached at Detroit Renaissance before he went to the NBA. Um, so when I look at Berkeley, there's still some players on that team, from that team, you know, that went in there and beat Detroit Renaissance. Now, albeit, they're two different teams now. I mean, Berkeley is a different team now. Detroit Renaissance last year made a run to the Final Four. Um, where they were knocked off. I think Plymouth Salem, I'm sorry, um, Rockford knocked them off um, in the Final Four. Um, so that's going to be really interesting to see. You know, but Berkeley, when I look at the teams who I think have the best chance to knock off Detroit Renaissance in that district, I think Berkeley's got the best chance because of who they got and the style they can play. They can slow you down. They can speed you up. um, And it's at home. Now, even though last year's district was at Berkeley and Detroit Renaissance had no issues with Berkeley, um... 
I just think now, with everything stabilized there, I think Berkeley has got a chance. They got a shot. I mean, I don't know if they got a shot to do it, but we'll see how that one goes. But Detroit Renaissance right now, I would say right now, has to be the overwhelming favorite in that district. They have to be. Just because of the experience they got. Um, so we'll see what happens in that district. Um, district 22, this one's over at Farmington Hills Mercy. Um, North Farmington takes on Farmington. That winner's going to take on West Bluefield in the district semifinal. And then you have the Catholic League Part 4, Birmingham Marine versus Farmington Hills Mercy. Um, when I look at this district, and I look at, and there's the na two words that say West Bloomfield on there. Now, why would I say that? Because West Bloomfield's in their district. They went to the state final last year. They're motivated. They're hungry. Well coached under Darren McAllister. You got the Davis sisters going to Georgia. You got Kendall Hendricks. Ava Lord. Um, Destiny Washington, Sheridan Beal, I mean, and the list keeps growing. So when I look at West Bloomfield in this district, you got to look at what they've been doing. And then their only loss of the year came to Anthony Wayne, Ohio, who's the top ranked team, one of the top ranked teams in Ohio. So. You look at a course, you have North Farmington taking on Farmington. North Farmington should be favored in that one. I mean, considering where they've been. And we look at North Farmington, they have a very talented player in the Sea of Jihad. They have Anaya Billups on that team. Um they got um Hannah Hart, who's also on that team. Um they've really performed, you know, they've had a nice year. I mean, they've really had a nice year. Taking on a Farmington team who has really struggled under Coach Natalie Nowak this year. I mean, they really, there were games where they just didn't score over over 15 points. I mean, that and, that, and you know, that's hard in itself. But in the last time... These two rivals played. Um, North Farmington won 59-12 over at Farmington. So, but for the winner of this, for that game, having to go play West Bloomfield in the first round, um, man, man, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's the formula basically set in stone both Farmington schools. But I think the formula more sentenced North Farmington than it did Farmington. Then on the other side, you have a Catholic League clash between Farm Farmington Hills Mercy and um, Birmingham Marion. Obviously, we know what Birmingham Marion with the, Swan with, um, with, with the Swanson sisters. I mean, and I know Mackenzie Swanson's a huge fan of my um, blog and podcast. Um... Also, Farm Tills Mercy, they got Alvin Alban Alban on that team. And they're well coaching to Gary Morris. Um like I said here, I mean both teams split their meetings earlier in the year. I mean both their teams split their meetings. But when I look at the chance that either one of these teams has against West Bloomfield, it's like and I know these two team, these two schools, they recruit. They recruit talent, you know. But when you're taking on a team like West Bloomfield, who is an offensive juggernaut, um, they run one of the most nastiest presses in the state, and then they run, and then they're not afraid to embarrass you. Look at what happened. What they did to Stony Creek this week, seventy-eight to sixteen. They've done that to almost everybody in the red this year. Just literally embarrassed them. I mean, that's how good West Bloomfield is. 
and it's a difficult scenario for them, you know, for the Catholic League teams against West Bloomfield because you know West Bloomfield is going to get the district final. Question is going to be is who's going to who is it going to be? Is it Birmingham Marion or is it Farmington's Mercy? Because when I look at that district, I don't think neither team's getting by West Bluefield. I'd be shocked if they did. I'd be really shocked if they did. And I know a lot of people around the state would be shocked if they did. Do I see it? Not likely. So that district over at um, Front Hills Mercy, um, West Bloomfield right now looks to be the early favorite in that district. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, now we go to District 23. This will be at Warren Cousineau. Um, a lot of changes in this district because I thought Royal Oak would have been the number one seed in this district. Had not they lost by four to Groves, which took them out of the one line and put them in the two line. Um, now they're seeded the second seed in the district. Um, now Warren Cousineau is the top seed, and they're going to take on either Warren Mott or Sterling Heights. And that should be a very interesting game because both those two teams have really struggled this year. Um, Cousineau has won 15 games. They have a win against C. Home, which is huge right now. Um, and then it sets up a matchup between Groves and Royal Oak, which is the third meeting um, between those two teams in the district semifinals. Now, Royal Oak and Groves, they've had some battles. I mean, they've had some... True battles. I mean, the first meeting was 38-31 in favor of Royal Oak on their home floor. Groves went and returned the favor 46-42 um, last Friday night. And now here we are here in this matchup. Here we are here. Um, when I look at this matchup and I look at, you know, whoever plays Warren Cousineau does, this does not match up well with the Patriots at all. They just do not match up really well to the Patriots at all. They just don't. Um, and then on the other side, you have Groves and Royal Oak, um, which I think is going to be a heck of a game between those two teams in Warren. It's going to be a heck of a game. Um, I think Royal Oak's the better team here on paper, but because of the experience. But Groves has proven they can match up with them. Now, what helps Groves is obviously have a player like Sierra Rocco on that team. I mean, you got others, too, who can play really good basketball. And plus, they're well coaching under Allison Heidi. So, this will be shaping up to be a really interesting matchup. And whoever plays Warren Cousineau, it'll be really interesting to see. Because if it's Royal Oak, I think Royal Oak matches up much better against the Patriots than they do against, than they do Groves. I mean, but Groves has some has a chance against Warren Cousineau. I mean, you look at the district a couple years ago when Cousineau went to Troy, um, and we know how that went. When Troy had had that magical run in the state quarterfinals, I knew Warren Cousineau was in deep trouble when they had the number one team and they had to go to Troy. I knew that was that, that was possible. But now Warren Cousineau is the number one seed, and they host their own district. But the realization of having to see Royal Oak in this district is really real at this at this moment. But Royal Oak has a tougher matchup because now they got to go through Groves. So this is a district where I think if you're Warren Cousineau, you better be careful of the 208 schools. You better be careful because I'll tell you what, if that if if that happens. They could be in some serious trouble. I think Warren Cousineau could be in some trouble. I really do. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how um, that district goes. So it'll be interesting to see how um, that one was, will, um, will pan out in that district over at um, in Warren. In Warren. Um, it's basically an OA versus um, Macomb Area Conference battle. Um, in that district over there in um, Warren. Let's go now from District 23 to District 27. 
Um, this will be over at Stony Creek. Um, you got Adams taking on Utica Eisenhower. That winner's taking on Stony Creek. And then Rochester versus Romeo in the district semifinals on the other side. Um, when I look at this district, and I think this is a really interesting district because there's some storylines in this one. Stony Creek has beaten everybody in this district. They have home court, but they haven't looked really good in recent weeks. They really they had a rough week um, where they lost to Oxford and then West Bloomfield. Um, so when I look at Stony Creek right now, they they look vulnerable. I know Coach Columbus Williams' team. You know what I mean? I mean, you know they're they're I mean they're they're in that transition phase right now, but. They had a rough week. And Adams gave them a lot of trouble at the Crosstown Showdown. So when I look at Stony Creek, you have experience. You have, Sid, you have Sarah La Prairie. You have Merrick Schlaubach. Izzy Avage. They played. They battled through. I mean, they've been through the wars. Um, But when I look at... When I look at um the district... I'm telling you, I don't think Stoney's going to have a good time in this district. I don't know. Because Adams and Utica Eisenhower, Stony Creek had a lot of trouble against Adams. They really did in that Crosstown Shona. They ended up surviving that one, 38-31, but they had to survive that one. And then earlier in the year, they went to Utica Eisenhower and got a big win. Against the Eagles. They got a big win against them. So when I look at Stony Creek's pass. It's not easy. Not at all. And then on the other side. You have Rochester and Romeo. Romeo is the number two seed in this district. I don't know how the Bulldogs got the two seed. But this is a terrible. Terrible. Matchup. For Coach. Um. For Romeo, it's 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 a, for Coach Ronda. I mean, like it's 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 a terrible matchup for Romeo taking on Rochester. Now Rochester, people are gonna say, well, Rochester's not the same team they used to be. That is true, but you know they lost a lot. They lost their guard. They lost a ton of guards last year. They lost a ton of guards. Um. So when I look at when I look at Romeo, or Coach Ron LeBlanc, I mean, like Romeo's had a great year. I mean, they've had an incredible year. But when I look at the matchup, when they see Rochester and seeing the Twin Towers there at Alice Max and Kylie Robinson, that's a difficult matchup for you. And that's not mentioned in their guard play. I mean, Lucy Cook is. Really improved. I mean, they got Caitlin Gugliel. She's a solid player for them. I mean, they got... I mean, they're well coached also under Coach Bill Thurston. This is as tough a matchup for Coach Ron LeBlanc as I've seen in a long time. Because this is... They don't match up well with Max and Robinson. Now, Romeo could say, albeit to their defense, they say... Well, Rochester's a matchup with their guards. That's true. But Rochester's been a defensive first team. Now, it's had, they haven't been able to say it in the last two games. I mean, albeit the teams they played against were Hartland and Clarkston, and we know how good both those teams are offensively. I um, was really impressed with Clarkston, what they did to Rochester without Eliana Roback, uh, what they did to Rochester. Um, Heartland, you kind of expected it. But then also you got to wonder if playing a back-to-back -back really hurt them in that game against Heartland. Because remember, Rochester had to play Rochester as Udor Northwest. And that was a five-point game. Where Rochester ended up winning that one by five. 35-30. Um, then they got to play West Bluefield this week, and we know how that's going to end up. Um... So when I look at so I look at Rochester. 
And you look at that district and you say to yourself, who's favored in that district? Who do you think would be favored? I was flipped between Rochester and Stony Creek. And people say, well, why not Romeo? Because when you look at Stony Creek, Stony Creek's beating everybody in the year. It beat everybody in that district already. So now you got to look at the Cougars and say, they're not the hunters. They're the hunted. And they have home court. So if you're going to beat Stony, you're going to have to beat them on their home floor. Um, now, I'll be at Stony Creek's shown some vulnerabilities on their home floor. Ask Oxford that question. Um, so when you really look at Stony Creek, their path is difficult. It's really difficult. Because if it is Rochester, Stony plays in the district final, all this pending, Rochester, Stony Creek's beaten Rochester, both their meanings by three total points. That says something right there. That really says something. So, that district, it looks, it looks really much wide open. And that district is really wide open over there at Stony Creek. It really is. So, we'll see how that one goes. But, Stony right now, I would have to say is the early favorite. But Rochester will have a strong say. I think Rochester gets by Romeo. I really do. But we'll see. We'll see. District 28 at Troy Athens. You have Bloopia Hills taking on Troy Athens. That winner's taking on Troy in the district semifinals. And then you have Avondale taking on Seaholm on the other side. Um, I look at the team that benefit the most in this district was Seahome. Here's why. I remember this week where Seahome played three games. They had a completely, it was a terrible loss to um, Warren Regina, which put, placed them at the, um, which placed them as the B team at the moment. Coach Chris Manchester and the players used that as motivation. And they went on to win their next two games. I remember hearing the chants in the interview from the players about the MPR. And for Seaholm, getting one of those two seeds was huge enough considering they got to play Bloomfield Hills um, now, Bloomfield Hills still has a shot at sharing the white title if they get by Seaholm on Tuesday. If they do that, then they share the title with Seaholm. Seaholm's at least clinch a share of the outright title with their win against Harper Woods. So when I look at Seaholm, I mean, Seaholm, of course, they get, it got by Lakeland as well in that one. Lakeland's a good win for that team. I mean, Lakeland, we know, has been rolling in the Lakes Valley. They're one of those teams in the in the Lakes Valley that, you know, they're 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 playing some good basketball lately. Um, and then that win against Harper Woods was huge for them. But hearing the chant of NPR in the background, you kind of knew what they were thinking about. You kind of knew what they were thinking. Um, now they're gonna have a rematch with Avondale, who. They won earlier in the year in Birmingham, 64-42. Now, Avondale has been injured all season long. Um, obviously, you know, they're a young group. Um, Coach Roy Krishman, we know what type of team he wants. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, it's a difficult matchup for, um, it's a really difficult matchup for Avondale taking on Seahome. Um, so it'll be really interesting. But Seal, my thought, got the best um, best draw here of the formula here because of getting the number two seed. And that was a big, big deal. Now, on the other side of the district, you have Bloomfield Hills taking on Troy Athens um, with that winner taking on Troy. Troy, of course, we know started off the year three and seven. They were three and seven. So when I look at the Colts, um, they have really started to turn things around. 
under Coach Laura Guzman. Uh, Diamond Prince has really started to blossom into a into a into a player. Um, Olivia Sprangler, I think, to, in my honest opinion, is probably the most improved player on that team. Um, you have Reagan Zider, who has had her moments of shooting the ball really well. Um, Carly Block has really has really um, you know been that defensive stopper for Troy. Um, you know, and then the key for Troy always has been the interior. I mean, you have Carly Hagenbottom, Ali Mantuza. Um, now obviously I know Guzman's system, if you like that four guard, one big set. Um, but you really look at the success that Troy has had starts and ends with Diamond Prince. Um, but Reagan Zyder, but, um, Reagan Zyder and, um, Olivia Spranglers had their moments where they've looked really good. I mean, Troy's got other players as well. I mean, Carlos Sarkaskis has really had a nice year for them. Um, they really have everybody bought it, bought into that program over there at Troy. I mean, they every, everybody's bought in over there, and if you're bought in, you're gonna have good results, and that's what Troy's doing right now. Um, now on the other side, you have in Troy Athens. You know, I, Troy Athens is, is the is the great Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, you don't know what you're gonna get with, you don't know what you're gonna have Coach Casey Clum's team. I mean, Abby Malone's had her moments. Um, they've had their moments. Um, um, uh, they've had their ups and their downs. And I know Coach J.C. Klump very well. For Troy Athens, it's just, you know, getting hot at the right time. That's going to be the key for them. They've got to find a way to get hot at the right time. They got Troy coming up, which would be really interesting. They got to go down to Troy to take on the Colts. That'll be really interesting. Um, but then there's Bloomfield Hills, and Bloomfield Hills, I think, is the most dangerous team in that district because of who they got. You have Ashley Fortner, you have Brianna Young, you have Ruby Smith, and they're well coached under Coach Kristen Massey. Bloomfield Hills has not had the best of seasons, but they're still a dangerous team. If they could get consistent shooting, you know, to go and play that inside out game, they're going to be a very tall, tall team to beat. I mean, they got interior size. They got, they, I mean, Brianna Young is a heck of a player. Ashley Fortner is a solid player. Um, I'm telling you, they can make a run at this thing. They have a chance against both Troy schools. I mean, they could get to the district final. They can. And I know they would love to have another shot at Seaholm again. I mean, they got them coming up on Tuesday at home. And then they could see them again in the district final, depending if they get by the Troy schools, which they haven't played. I mean, both Troy schools are in the blue. Bloomfield Hills is in the um, is in the white. So we'll see. We'll see. But that's a really interesting district over there. Um. It'll be interesting to see how that district goes over there at um at Troy Athens. Of course, um Troy Athens does have home court for both boys and girls basketball in their districts. District twenty nine at Waterford Mott. Um you got Waterford Mott taking on Clarkston, and then you have Waterford Kettering taking on Lake Orion. Um when you look at this district here. And a lot of people are already starting to pencil in Clarkston Lake Orion District Final. It looks very, very likely that's going to happen. The question for me is, when I look at Clarkson's side of things, does Coach Aaron Goodnow rest Eliana Roback um, and play her in the District Final? Or... Does she or does he play her her in the first round game against Waterford Mott? That is a question for Coach Aaron Goodnow that he only knows. Um, we but when I look at Clarkston right now, without Eliana rollback, they've been playing pretty well. Um, obviously 
the team ball game has really helped out here. And you look at players like Brooklyn Colbert's really blossomed. You look at Emily Valencia's played well. Ellie Hernandez has really played well. Ella, Ella Magnus really played well. Um, and you look at the numbers, the stats don't lie when you look at Clarkston. Um, you know, obviously, you know, rollback's going to get hurts. But the play of the role players has really been critical for Coach Good now and the Wolves, and it's showing right now. It's really showing. Even, the, even in the first quarter against West Bloomfield, they looked really good. They looked really good. And then on the other side, you have Lake Orion. Lake Orion's been finding multiple ways to win. They've been finding multiple ways to win. I mean, obviously, you look at the play of Izzy Belinsky. Um, Ryan Palachek's really stepped up her game. Ryan Palachek's had some moments where she's looked really good. Nevaeh Wood's been holding her own. Ellie Britt's been solid um, running the, um, at point guard. Um, and then you have, um, and then Charlotte Pabloski has been playing really good basketball lately. And here's the thing for Coach Bob Bridges' team. This team can get better. This team can get better. Um, I don't think they've shown their best potential yet. I just don't think they have. And you look at the Dragons the way that they have found ways to win games. Um, you look at the wins against, the win against Clarkston, the win against... Um, you know, the win against them, Rochester, the win against Oxford and Wild Lake Northern. Um, Lake Orion, you know, they, they've, been, they've been finding ways to win games. And if you find way, ways to win games, you're going to be a dangerous postseason team. When I look at Waterford Kettering and Waterford Mott, I don't think they match up well to Lake Orion or Clark. Probably if, if you had to say, if I had to choose who would give the best chance in the city of Waterford to have a chance and would say Waterford Mott right now. But I, but they don't match up well to Clarkson at all. They really don't. Um, and then with Lake Orion, and then with um, Waterford Kettering, they, they, don't, they don't match up well for Lake Orion at all. This could be an opportunity um, for both teams to use their young talents before they gear up to play each other in the district final. I mean, this is a golden opportunity for that to happen. Because I don't think either Waterford school matches up well to Lake Orion or Clarkston. I'd be shocked if somebody pulled off an upset in this district. Do I see it happening? Probably not. But I'd be shocked if it did. But I don't see it. So I think it's going to be a Lake Orion Clarkson district final. Lake Orion Clarkson round three. Both teams won on their respective home floors. Um, Clarkson won 60-48 at home against the Dragons. The Dragons, um, Lake Orion returned the favor, knocking out the Wolves 49-48 at Lake Orion. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, like, you know, but right now, when I look at that district, if it's not Lake Orion or Clarkston in the district final, something is seriously wrong. So, we'll see. Um, and then our last district here is District 32. This will be held over at Lapeer. Um, you got Holly taking on Lapeer. That winner is taking on Grand Blank. And then Davison versus Oxford. Um, that is occurring in the district semifinals. So when I look at this district, and I'm looking at it here and says, well, Grand Blank has to be favored. They are. But... I think Oxford's got a shot here. Now, the reason why I say Oxford's got a shot is because they play day. I mean, like, they, they've lost the Grand Blank three years straight. You went to the red for this exact reason. You were placed in the red for this reason. Because you look at your district, you know you're going to have to go through Grand Blank. You played almost half of the teams in the red this year that match up the Grand Blank. 
you look at a team like West Bloomfield. I think West Bloomfield is a much better team than Grand Blank. And then you look at, of course, you're playing against Clarks, and we know how good they are. And then you look at, of course, playing your arch rival Lake Orion. Uh, we know how that game went. And then, and then we, and then you play in Stony Creek. You got to win against Stony Creek. And then you played Rochester earlier in the year, and you split with them. So, if Oxford's not battle tested, something's wrong. And they got to play Birmingham Detroit Country Day as well. And they do have a win against Birmingham Marion. So this team is battle tested. This team is battle tested. You have proven playmakers. You have Allison Hubsettler. You have Brady Elling. You have you have you have Lexi Yankee. You have Mia Champagne. You have Peyton Richter. So don't tell me that you don't have a chance against Grand Blank. You do have a chance against Grand Blank. <laughs> when I look at the district here, Oxford plays Davison first. Oxford won against Davison 42-34 back at Ian Smith. So when I look at Davis, when I look at that matchup, you know, it's a, it, it should be very interesting. The question for me is what Oxford team is going to show up. And Oxford's got to make free throws. They've got to make free throws. Because in the Lake Orion game, they were 6 of 18 from the line. 6 of 18. That's not going to win games. That's really not going to win games. If you go 6 of 18 from the line. But also, we're keeping an eye on the Sophia Rob situation. Rob's been dealing with a foot injury. Will she be ready for that? For the district. I know a lot of people in Oxford are saying that she might not be. But you never know. You never know. Um, but Brady Ellings been playing really good basketball. Um, Lexi Yankees been playing well. Allison Huffstedler is the key in that in that whole thing for Oxford. If Oxford wants to win a district title, she's gonna have to play great. Now, when you look at Grand Blank, obviously Chelsea Bishop there. Um, they should get by either Holly or Lapeer. Um, Lapeer's been a, a mystery. I mean, they got Lexi Norman on that team, but they've been a pure mystery. Uh, I know Coach Evan Bell very well, um, but they've been a pure mystery. It's hard for me to figure them out. That should be a really interesting matchup between Holly and Lapeer. But then that winner's got to take on Grand Blank, and I don't see how neither of those two teams match up really well with um, Grand Blank. So I expect Grand Blank to be in the district final. Davison and Oxford. Oxford's got to beware. I mean, they got to beware. It depends what team at Oxford shows up. I mean, obviously, we know Oxford can score. We know that they got balance. We know that they, we know they're well coached under Coach Rachel Breyer. But my question is, what Oxford team shows up? Because if, if they play like they did against Lake Orion, and they play like what Grand Blank's going to, and, and you know what Grand Blank brings to the party. I mean, you know Grand Blank's going to be coming off either, either, because they're going to be playing West Bloomfield. Final game of the year. And that's a difficult matchup for Grand Blank going up against Ox. Going up against um, So, so um, Grand Blank is going to know what life on the red is. When they take on West Bloomfield. So, Ox is going to have their hands full in this district. They're going to really have their hands full <laughs> in this district. So, we'll see what happens. All right, before I sign on off here, obviously make sure you follow the blog at SaginawBay4650 at blogspot.com. Um, the boys' basketball districts are up. Um, obviously, we're going to recap the matchups, obviously, on the um, on the blog as well. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, so, so those are the take on the girls' basketball districts. Of course, they've been announced. Um, they were announced on Sunday. Um, Thanks to the NPR, um, how the matches were seeded. 
So we'll see what happens going forward um, in time. All right, man, sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Sangre by 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, keep an eye on the football situation over at Southfield Arts and Tech. See who their new football coach will be, and we'll go from there. Obviously, spring sports is in the future here coming up. A um, couple cheerleading teams um, already in the um, state finals. Um, wrestling uh, obviously ended as well, so we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, man, we're signing off here. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody.